In this segment, we're going to continue looking at object properties, and specifically the object properties for the fill of an object. And so we'll just go through and talk about the different types of stitches, and then we can talk a little bit about how we can affect the way they're going to look with the styles and the patterns. So we'll start with the satin fill, which is the first choice on our list here. And generally speaking, a satin fill will have needle penetrations along the outer edges, but no stitching through the middle. That's what sort of is what we consider a satin stitch. And in this case, the satin stitch really isn't meant to have styles or patterns. Those apply more to things like the step fill. Um, that said, you can certainly try applying patterns and styles to your satin fill and see what kind of effects that you can create. Um, but in general, usually a satin fill is going to have none of these, so that's why they're defaulted to not be on at the moment. Now one thing you can do um, to control a satin fill is you can apply direction lines. And if you remember, we'd shown we have the ability to add directions with this tool here. And so what I'm saying is, if you want your satin fill to be on an angle, you can choose an angle. Um, but if you don't want that angle, notice that there's a... Um, I guess a little cancel out button right in the middle. If I click on that, it'll take that dividing line away. Now maybe you want to have the stitch start at this angle and then kind of come up to be the 90 degree angle, but then on this end you want it to turn over and start facing this direction. So you can, with a satin fill, you can apply multiple direction lines to your shape. So that's in general how the satin fill works. Now if we switch this over to be a step fill you'll notice right away that well I've got a patterns turned on so I'm just gonna turn all my patterns and styles off for the moment okay and you can see here that my weave fill so different than a satin fill the step fill will not only have stitches along the edges but it'll also have stitches through the center and now I'm just going to go ahead, we have the ability to add a direction and that becomes the direction of the fill. But we only have the ability to add one. If I try and add a second line, it takes away the first one. So you can choose whether you want your weave fill to be um, a long stitch direction across your shape or a shorter stitch direction across the shape. But it can be any stitch direction that you want. It may You may choose this based on the fabric that you're sewing on and the give or the weave of your fabric. But nevertheless, you have the ability to add one stitch direction to your weave fill. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to enlarge the size of this shape slightly so that we have a little bit more of the area of the fill with which to look at. And what I wanted to show is that for a weave fill, we have two things that we can add to our weave fill. We have styles and we have patterns. And there are actually a huge list of these, and it's going to be a little bit easier for us to see if I was to take this object properties toolbar and I'm just going to move it off of the desktop and make it floating and once it's floating it gives me the ability to resize the box and so I'm just going to maximize uh, the size of this box so that we can see um, the vastness of the amount of these choices so I've left some of my desktop behind so that we can still see what the fill looks like but for example right now I'm set for a step fill and I'm on pattern number three. Well, if I change to pattern four, you can see that it changes the look of that, that fill. And if I change to five, it does again. And what's happening is these patterns adjust the um, offset of the stitches. And so even though I know that my stitch direction is on, I guess it looks like about this angle here. Let's see, where's the angle line? It's on this angle right here, but we're still seeing a bit of a pattern the way the thread has repeated itself, and it actually created a bit of a, a diagonal pattern here, but if I choose a different one, you see you get a different type of effect, and each time we choose a different pattern, it's going to change the uh, appearance of the fill. So one way that would be really easy to see these would be for you to create a series of pieces of um, embroidery squares or fills shapes and then choose different patterns and stitch them out but every time you do you get a different fill pattern applied over your stitch angle now under patterns there's several that are see, sort of the standard fills we also have other ones that give us a more decorative look like the zigzag and the fish or a weave and then we've got all sorts of decorative ones like sea waves 
and it just goes on and on. Look at the size of the list. Um, I'm going to see two rows at a time. Well, I can scroll through this list and see that there's just dozens and dozens. I didn't count, but probably more than 100, maybe even 200, I'm not sure, styles that we can apply in our background. And when we do, you can see quite clearly what it's going to look like. So these are the patterns. And usually with a pattern, you're still filling in the background. But what's happening is, is the needle penetrations are being placed in very specific spots to create a design. And so, like I said, you have the ability to change these designs based upon just visually what looks best to you or what seems to be appropriate for the design that you're making. Now, the the ob the alternate or the opposite of patterns, I guess it's not the opposite, but with a pattern, we have the ability to control it in a filled in background. But if you choose a style, for example, I'll choose this little chain style. Um, you can see here that the background is filled in, but it's filled in using more of like a decorative running line. And there's all sorts of different styles. Probably if the, as many patterns as we had, we have just as many styles. And you'll see here, if we look through some of these, some of them actually create little designs. Uh, let's see if I can find something like that. There was just clicking on them is going to give you the ability to see what they are. Like this one's little stars. I noticed like little people and little animals and things that can be repeated in your background. And you might find little cars and stuff like that. Some of them are just, um, you know, little stars and each one gives a different look and that's our ability to choose them so you can see here that there's um, really a massive list of things that can be repeated in the background and so based you need to kind of decide based upon the artwork what seems to be appropriate to you and then you just choose either a style or a pattern and I think you can even try combining them together and making um, like two of the same so yeah, like this is like little cars are being repeated in the background. Now I have the little cars repeated in the background, but if I choose a different pattern, it changes how those cars are then repeated. The offset of the cars. It's subtle, but it's there. You can see the between this one and that one. So you can kind of apply them to the two together in a way and have a bit of an ability to control those. So when with the step fill, you have all of these different choices to work with your styles and your patterns. Now let's move along to another choice um, of type of stitch and oops, I need to select the object first. Um, piping, this is a different kind of concept and usually with piping again it's, there's no style applied and I would just stick with a basic pattern. What we see is the thread contours with our shape and so um, you don't really apply a style or a pattern. That doesn't mean you can't apply a style or a pattern. And certainly the patterns are going to give us um, that different offset from one row to the next. It changes. Um, you know, does it move 25% off the last row or 50% off the last row? And how how many rows of offsets are there? And so there's actually kind of a mathematical way of um, looking at this. But this is making it easy for us and we can just simply choose and then we see what it looks like on our screen. But you can see here that the thread is going to follow the shape, um, whatever shape that we create, and it contours around it. So that's called the piping. And yeah, there's um, really interesting effects that can be created using that piping option now. Um, but moving along, the next option is going to be applique. And I'll probably um, do a separate segment just for talking about applique because there are some um, things to consider. But generally speaking, if you choose applique, then what's going to happen is your design is actually going to be um, sewn with a piece of fabric as opposed to a piece of fill. And therefore, we've, we don't have a lot of these different choices for the applique. We don't have you know styles or patterns. It's just going to be, how do you want to finish your applique? And so I will, I'll, I'll come back and have a, a, se a separate segment just to look at the differences and how we can control an applique. Uh, another type of fill is the net fill. And when you choose net fill, you can see here that what it's done is it's basically um, used an X pattern. So rows of stitches going on this angle and then on an alternate angle to create a net fill. And in here you have the ability to set the size of the cell, so 
it's one millimeter. If I make it two, it's going to be larger. Um, you can offset the, the net fill so that'll kind of offset it from the outline. Or you can change the angle. So I've got it set on 45. If I change it up to 90, it'll change my net fill to be a 90. So that's something that can be useful, especially um, when doing cross stitch. We often use a net fill to fill in the holes of our cross stitch design. So now those are the different types of stitches that we can apply. Um, there's also the cross stitch and the photo stitch types of stitches. But those stitches require an image to have been converted. And, and we have taken a look in the opening segment um, in the quick start guide. I went through cross stitch and photo stitch. And what I will do is during the object properties, I'll include a segment again about cross stitch and take a little bit closer look at the object properties of a cross stitch. And same thing for photo stitch. Um, but I'll add that segment later because I need to prepare some artwork and bring that in so that we can work with it. That's why those are gray now, because I don't have an image um, that was converted to cross stitch, and so therefore this tool just isn't available. So those are the choices for fill, and you have satin fill, step fill, piping, applique, and net fill as the different types of general stitches. And then once you've chosen, you have other choices like your styles and your patterns that you can control. Now there's more things that we can control and I'm going to create separate segments just so that I can look in more depth at things like the removing overlaps and the sequence and the density and the underlay and how these things are affected. So that's what I'll do now. I'll just prepare that segment and come back with that.